What is going on out there folks? Rooster here in Tennessee and uh, today I'm going to do a little bit different video, kind of just a informative uh, video I guess I should say. Um, cover a couple things here. Um, I mentioned on a post on my YouTube channel a few days ago I was going to talk about watt meters a little bit and um, I figured no better time than the present to, to talk about them. Um, obviously what we're looking at here in front of me, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, is a, a bird. And this is a bird 43P. And uh, while we're on the subject of it, I'm going to show this thing, which is a antenna analyzer by Rig Expert. This is the AA30. I think it's the more basic model that they have. Um, and these are two things that I believe that uh, either everyone should have access to, um, as far as the antenna analyzer goes or that everyone should have uh, depending on how serious you are about the hobby um, and I'll get into that here in a second as far as, as, far as that goes but uh, first we'll talk about the antenna analyzer um, if you don't have one of these um, I recommend you or someone in your, your neighborhood of radio operators um, if you're like me um, here where I'm at there's probably 40 or 50 sea bears within a uh, 60 or 70 mile radius there's a good bit um, and, and it pays for at least one of you guys to have an antenna analyzer um, don't tune your antennas just using a watt meter um, specifically doses you know paradynamics whatever don't trust what that watt meter says get yourself an antenna analyzer if you guys have to throw in 40 or 50 bucks each to get one 25 30 bucks each and just be the community antenna analyzer do it it's the way to go you don't have to get one of these i think these are about 200 something bucks uh, mfj makes one that works just fine um, what it does it tells you the impedance the reactants the swr everything you could want to know about your antenna and your feed line you can find out on one of these analyzers and to be fair uh, i've owned the mfj and the rig expert and functionality wise I probably like the MFJ a little bit better but uh, for durability um, I like this one a little bit better so uh, they both do about the same thing um, they just go about it a little bit different way so anyway uh, that's all I have to say about the antenna analyzer but I always tell people you need to have access to one of these if you've got one guy in your radio club that has one of these just to use just to use to tune antennas um, you know it'll pay for itself because uh, this thing will tell you what a standard watt meter won't tell you um, this is a, a very good tool to have antenna analyzer so anyway um, enough of that we're gonna get back to the watt meter thing here uh, okay so watt meter what is the dang importance of a watt meter well you probably hear people say it all the time uh, all it doesn't matter what the watt meter says um, that's just a reference um, who cares what the watt meter says it's just a reference anyway well being a reference is kind of an important thing if you think about it because where are you at without a good reference point um, you're kind of lost right so uh, you know I like to think of it kind of like a dang uh, if someone was giving you directions and they don't know where you're at so how would they give you directions if they don't know where you're at um, let's say you're, you're asking somebody um, how to get to Walmart and they say well where are you and you say well I don't know well they, you don't have a reference point to go by you don't have a standard a good reference point to go by so you can't really give them any direction well a watt meter is the same way in a lot of senses now I'm not here to say that no other watt meter is good not to use anything besides a bird because let's be honest here not everybody can afford a bird watt meter um, the, the meters are expensive I bought this one brand new um, when I was buying a bunch of stuff I bought a bunch of watt meters at one time a bunch of elements I bought this one brand new and I think it's a 400 something dollar meter that's just not realistic for everybody uh, this one has a peak kit in it and everything else and uh, if you don't know how a bird works um, if you've watched some of my videos you've probably figured it out by now but for those out there watching that don't know how a bird meter works 
you've got three scales here, okay? So you got your top scale that's going to read 25, uh, 250, uh, 2500, and 25,000, basically. So it goes up to 25, but depending on the slug, it's going to read different power outputs. So same thing with our second scale there. It's going to read, you know, 5, 50, uh, 500, 5,000, uh, 50,000, and so forth. On the bottom, same thing. Um, like, like 10, uh, I think you might even be able to get a 1 watt slug, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, 10, 100, 1,000, um, 10,000, you know, 100,000 and up. That's the way it's going to read. So that's how the, uh, the, the meter reads, and you're like, well, how the heck does it read everything? Well, if you don't know, a bird meter uses what's called an element. A lot of people call them slugs. And those slugs or elements are rated for a specific output power. And according to what slug you put in, it tells you what scale you're going to read. So we've got a 50 right here. So we'd be looking at the second scale because that's the 50 watt scale. Also, scroll over here and look at some of these. Um, this slug is a 50 kW, so that means 50,000. That means we would also use the second scale to read it, except instead of reading 50 watts, we'd be reading 50,000 watts. Same thing, 25 kW would be the top scale. Uh, let's see here, 25 watts would also be the top scale because that reads 25, 250, 2500, etc. So hopefully you're getting the gist of it. So why a bird meter? Well, here's the reason why a bird meter. Every bird meter out there, and elements or whatever, slugs, whatever you want to call them, is guaranteed to be within 5% tolerance, I believe is what it is. So that means these meters are all going to read within 5% of each other. That means if you have a bird meter at your house, and you have the same tune on your antenna, everything else, um, and you have one of these slugs, that your meter should read within 5% of what my meter reads. And that leaves very little room for error. You don't have a lot of error. And that leaves a pretty solid reference point. So that means if I sell you a radio and it's doing, let's say, 9 watts average on my meter and 35 watts peak, that means when you get it home, it should do within 5% of what it's doing here. Now, it may do 5% more and it may do 5% less, but it's going to do within 5%. And that's a real important thing, um, especially when you start getting into amplifiers and, and stuff that are really drive specific, excuse me. That's a really important thing to keep in mind, um, is having a solid and stable reference point. Now, a reference point doesn't do you any good if it's different here and it's different there. Um, as I've mentioned before, a lot of watt meters show a lot of different readings. Now, you may hook up a dosi meter, for example, and a dosi is a fine meter for the price tag you pay, okay? If you're in that budget and, and don't have a lot of money to spend, um, by all means, a dosi meter is fine. However, if you're going to go out here and spend $1,000, $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 on an amplifier, like many people do, don't hook it up to a $150 watt meter. Don't hook it up to a $100 watt meter. I mean, you know, I hate to say this in a rude way, but use some sense. <laughs> if you're going to spend $1,500 on an amplifier, get a good watt meter to run it on. Um, it's going to save you a lot of headache um, in the future. So, um, speaking on that, kind of what I'm getting into. If you guys don't do your own radio work and you have somebody else build your amps, I'm, I'm just going to tell you nine times out of ten, they're going to be using a bird watt meter. So if your technician tells you, um, let's say your tech builds you an amp and he says, all right, Jim Bob, um, this amp takes eight watts average and 35 watts peak, for example. And you're saying, oh, okay, cool, 8 watts average, 35 watts peak. Um, 
And he says, okay, don't put any more than eight watts average and 35 watts peak. Or maybe he tells you 10 watts average and 35 watts peak. You know, whatever, whatever your guy tells you. And uh, you say, okay, 10 watts average, 35 watts peak. Okay, I got it. Don't put any more than that into it. And you get home and you hook your amp up and you hook your radio up. And uh, you've got your dosi meter there. Or whatever meter you've got. Well, your dosi meter reads a little bit tighter than your bird meter. Uh, and where your bird meter says 35 watts, your dosi meter is only showing 25 watts. And on average power, let's say your dosi meter is showing 8 watts and your bird meter is showing 10, you know, whatever. Um, and just a side fact here, I'm going to, I hurt a lot of people's feelings. Yes, a dosi meter will read tighter than a bird um, a lot of times. So that's, that's just the way it is. That doesn't make it a better meter. It doesn't make it uh, anything like that. They just sometimes they read tighter. That's just the fact of, it, of the matter. But anyway, let's say you've got this tight dosi meter and uh, you're trying to run it into your amp or whatever and uh, you say, well, oh, dang, my dosi is only showing 25 watts. I guess I need to hook up a little bit stronger radio to get that 35 watts peak. Well, you hook up a stronger radio and that stronger radio is now doing 35 on your dosi, but you don't know what it's doing on a bird meter because you don't have it. You don't, you don't have a bird meter. Um, well, lo and behold, your amplifier goes up in smoke, and you're like, well, what the heck, man? Uh, I only put 35 watts into it. What, why, why did I blow my amplifier up? I listened to what my, my tech said. Um, dang, what the heck happened? So, what you probably do is you take your radio, and you take your now blown up amp to your tech, and he hooks it up, and he says, well, dang, dude, this radio is doing 45 or 50 watts peak. And you say, well, heck, at my house, it was only doing 35 watts peak. And what's your tech going to say? He's going to say, well, what kind of meter do you have? And you're going to say, well, I got a dosi. And he says, well, man, your dosi doesn't read like a bird. Uh, what I was telling you is 35 watts on a bird meter, not 35 watts on a dosi. Everything I run, I hook it up to a bird. And that gets back to what I'm telling you about having a good reference point. That's the importance of a watt meter. If you're going to spend a lot of money on radio equipment, get the right equipment to test it with. Don't, uh, don't buy a $1,000 amp and then go and buy a $100 meter. It just does not make any sense. And you will, I promise you, you'll end up having trouble like that if you get into that, you know, if you buy an amplifier that has a specific parameter for what you're supposed to drive into it, um, you will end up running into that. I mean, I've seen it time and time again. Um, you know, sometimes a dosi meter, almost no matter what, will not show over 35 or 40 watts peak. I've seen it. You could hook a Cobra 29 up to it, 35 watts. You could hook a Galaxy Saturn up to it, 35 watts. Hook a 2980 up to it, 35 watts but now you hook those three radios up to a bird meter and you'll start seeing the difference in a power output and another thing about a bird it shows you something that's called average power and average power is something that gets overlooked sometimes and uh, a lot of people don't even pay attention to it because if you have any other meter besides a bird you don't have anything that's going to read a true average power and <clears throat> Sometimes radios will do the same amount of peak output, but they'll do different, amount, different amounts of average power. So you could have two radios doing 35 watts peak. One does 10 watts average, one does 12 watts average. Now that radio that does 12 watts average is going to drive your equipment significantly harder. Now you think that's only 2 watts, but 2 watts average is a huge difference. Um, especially driving some amplifiers that are really drive specific. So. Uh, anyway, I really just want to get into this because I, I, it's something that, that needs addressed. Um, it's something that I don't feel like a lot of people talk about. And when people talk about watt meters, they say, well, it's just a reference. It doesn't matter. Just get you a cheap meter. It's just a reference. Well, 
just a reference really doesn't make sense because a reference, like I said, is a very important thing. Um, without a solid reference point, you know, you're basically like the guy looking for directions to Walmart that doesn't know where he's at. You're lost. Um, and that's the best way I know to put it. You know, I guess that's a, a decent analogy. Maybe it's not. Maybe I sound stupid saying that, but <laughs> uh, that's the best analogy I could think of. So anyway, if you're, if you're just building uh, a station on a budget, look, you don't have to go out and buy a bird walk meter. That's not what I'm saying. If you're just wanting to get into the radio hobby and you know you want to spend two or three hundred bucks, don't buy a bird meter. Um, it's a waste of time. Just try to keep everything. Uh, I guess uh, how should I say this? Balanced on your station. You know, if you're going to buy a two hundred dollar radio, or let's say let's say you want to buy a thousand dollar amp, three or four hundred dollar radio, three or four hundred dollar antenna. Uh, you know, two or three hundred dollars worth of coax, spend the extra money and get a good watt meter. If you're going to build a budget station, you know, don't worry about it so much. But a bird meter is a good tool. And uh, you can even tune your antenna with a bird meter because what it does, it, it checks reflected power too. Um, you can turn the slug around backwards in it for, for folks that are watching that don't know anything about them. And it'll tell you your reflected power, which is basically how much uh, how much power is coming back from your antenna down to your station, um, which is a good in indication of your SWR um, and the tune on your antenna. So I know guys that have tuned their antenna with nothing but a bird meter, um, and it ends up tuning out just perfect. They didn't have an analyzer, so they turn they tune it with a bird meter. Um, they tune their antenna to get the lowest amount of reflected power back and uh, they end up with a perfect tune so anyway I'm sorry that this video ran a little bit long um, and I know it's just a lot of talking not a lot of action in it so uh, hopefully uh, if anybody watches this I kind of get the point across and you understand how important it is to have a good watt meter um, it's just as important as anything else um, because like I said if your tech sells you an amplifier um, or if you buy one off me and I make a suggestion as far as how much drive to put in it. Um, my suggestion doesn't mean anything if you don't have a similar tool. And that goes for everybody out there, not just me. Um, whether you buy an amp off of this guy or that guy or, or whatever, um, or if you buy a whole station off of somebody and they set it up together. Um, like I say, you got a technician that has a radio and an amp and he sets them up together on his bench and he says, okay, here you go, out the door. And, uh, you know, it's doing one thing on his meter, but you get it home and it's doing another, um, you could run into some issues. So, uh, anyway, folks, that's the importance of a bird watt meter or the importance of having a, a good watt meter. Um, bird is the industry standard. Um, that's why I use it. I don't, I, if something was better, I would use it. Um, if there was a better watt meter out there or something that was held in a higher regard, um, trust me, I would have it, uh, but uh, bird seems to be the uh, the industry standard, so that's what we run here. Nothing but bird meters, and I've got probably five or six of them here. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Questions, comments, complaints, let me know. We're gonna have some equipment coming up here soon for sale. Sorry that this video ran so long. Hopefully, uh, if it didn't teach you anything, it at least provided some. Uh, <laughs> some background noise or some entertainment for you but that's it guys uh, 73's rooster in Tennessee and I hope to catch you guys out there on the band see you bye